When she's not hawking cell phones, she's been known to turn into some unforgettable furry creatures and pop up in hilarious comedies. Here's the story of Lily Adams, aka Milana Weintraub. Milana Weintraub's first big break came in 1995 at the age of 8, when she appeared on three episodes of the classic medical drama ER. That led to a gig on the popular daytime soap opera Days of Our Lives, in which she played a young version of Kristen Blake, who would later become Kristen Damara. The character of Kristen is one of the show's main villains. As Weintraub recalled to Esquire in 2015, It was really weird. I actually don't have tons of memories from it. I played someone in a flashback version. I ended up not auditioning for that. They just called me after they saw me on ER to do that. As is fairly typical of long-running soap operas, the role of Kristen has been played by many different actors over the years. Considering that, maybe there's a chance that Weintraub could one day reprise the role as an adult someday. Soon after Days of Our Lives, Weintraub booked a small but notable role on an episode of the Disney Channel sitcom Lizzie McGuire. Entitled Gordo's Video, the season 1 episode concerns Lizzie's friend Gordo setting up hidden cameras around the school. In the midst of doing so, he happens to catch Weintraub's character eating and belching. Appropriately enough, her character was officially billed as Cute Burper. As she recalled to Esquire, I didn't even really have to burp. But I practiced my burps for a long time before that. I'm a professional disgusting person. Weintraub made two more appearances on Lizzie McGuire. On the episode Here Comes Aaron Carter, she plays a dancer, and she later appears as an extra in Season 2's You're a Good Man, Lizzie McGuire. As she noted to Esquire, Comedy came early. I knew when I was a kid that I was silly and I knew that I liked people who were funny. But I don't think I knew I was funny. I didn't really think about it. Well, you've got to figure out a way to get everyone to see this. With ER, Days of Our Lives, and Lizzie McGuire on her resume, Von Trubb had a pretty good run as a child actor. But then she nearly quit the industry for good. Her reason wasn't burnout or exposure to vices or anything dramatic like that. Instead, she simply thought that it wasn't for her. As she explained to Esquire, I stopped around middle school and high school. I remember thinking, I should probably focus on something more realistic. This is probably not going to work out. I have high hopes, but that's probably not enough to make it in film. But Weintraub couldn't quite shake the acting bug when she went to college, as a terrible bout of boredom during that time in her life convinced her to return. She attended the University of California, San Diego, but she didn't particularly enjoy it until she got herself on stage. As she divulged to Esquire, they had a really great theater program, so I just took theater classes so I could not go crazy and keep myself busy. I totally got sucked back in. When Weintraub won the role of Lily Adams in the AT&T commercials, she thought it would be just another short-term acting gig. But the response was so strong that within three years, she had appeared in more than 40 ads for the telecom company. As AT&T Vice President of Advertising, Valerie Vargas, revealed to Adweek in 2016, the first spot was so successful for us that we thought, let's do another one, and then another one, and then another one. It was so well received that we kept bringing her back. So what is the secret behind the success of these commercials? According to Hank Perlman of Hungry Man, the company that produces them, I think Milana's Lily resonates with audiences because she's a multi-dimensional character in a way that's rare for commercials. We try as hard as we can not only to make her funny, but to make her as strong, smart, and human as possible. Who's on TV now? NBC's time-jumping, tear-jerking family drama This Is Us was one of the most popular broadcast network shows of the 2010s and early 2020s. Over the course of its six seasons, the Emmy Award-winning series was a ratings juggernaut that also served as a showcase of some amazing acting. This Is Us was beloved for its unique style of switching back and forth between three siblings growing up in the 80s and 90s and their adult lives in the present day. The oldest sibling was Kevin Pearson, played by Justin Hartley, a dissatisfied TV star who leaves his top-rated show and joins an off-Broadway play called Back of an Egg. Weintraub had a recurring role on This Is Us as Sloane Sandberg, a playwright who dates Kevin for a brief spell. She ultimately appeared in a total of eight episodes in the show's first season. Weintraub had some serious comedy training, having studied improv at the Upright Citizens Brigade and started a number of college humor videos. That humorous background has led to some small but memorable roles in several high-profile projects. In the 2016 Ghostbusters reboot, for example, she made a brief, dialogue-free appearance as Subway Rat Woman. The scene involves her reacting with visible disgust when scores of ghost rats poured out of a subway station. The director of that movie was Paul Feig, who also worked with Weintraub on the short-lived Yahoo screen sitcom Other Space. Weintraub seems to be a favorite of another popular comedy director, as she popped up a couple of times on the Netflix series Love, which was co-created by Judd Apatow. She played Natalie, the ex-girlfriend of the main character Gus. While she's not yet an A-list name, Weintraub has certainly been rubbing shoulders with the right people. It's 11 a.m. and you're stoned and you're at my house. I'm worried. In the summer of 2017, 
Milana Weintraub landed one of the most sought-after roles in Hollywood. She was cast as Doreen Green, aka Squirrel Girl, on Marvel's New Warriors, a superhero comedy series that was set to air on Freeform. The show was going to revolve around six 20-somethings dealing with the challenges of young adulthood and being a superhero. Weintraub was a relatively surprising choice for such a high-profile part, especially since better-known actors such as Anna Kendrick and Shannon Purser had publicly lobbied to play the character. But ultimately, Weintraub's admission into the club that is the Marvel Cinematic Universe wound up rather muted. In 2019, Freeform and Disney cancelled several small screen projects that were not set to air on Disney+, including New Warriors. But Weintraub eventually did get a chance to play Squirrel Girl, as she voiced the character on the animated short series Marvel Rising Initiation and the TV movie Marvel Rising Secret Warriors. She also played her again on the narrative podcast Marvel Squirrel Girl, the unbeatable radio show. In addition to her acting career, Milana Weintraub has been known for putting pen to paper, or finger to keyboard as the case may be. She's been credited as a writer on five Robot Chicken episodes as well as multiple college humor sketches. Outside of sketch comedy, she has a co-writing credit on the 2019 film Mother's Little Helpers, which she also starred in. She's also written for websites like The Daily Beast and Pop Sugar, as well as on her own Instagram, where she offers unique perspectives on family, Judaism, and the acting life. Weintraub's writing has even been nominated for awards. In 2020, she was recognized as part of the writing team for the streaming sketch comedy show Making Fun with Akila and Milana at the YouTube Streamy Awards. And her miniseries That Moment When was nominated for a Webby Award and three Telly Awards. A squirrel isn't the only furry creature that Weintraub has inhabited. In 2021, she starred as a mail carrier named Cecily in the horror comedy movie Werewolves Within. When a blizzard causes the residents of a small town to seek shelter in a lodge, an even bigger problem is revealed when a werewolf starts picking off the characters one by one. As the lack of trust gradually grows within the group, the bodies continue to pile up. Be a good neighbor. Like Mr. Rogers. With guns, though. With guns, yes. Skip ahead if you don't want to be spoiled. But in the end, Cecily and the friendly forest ranger named Finn are still alive. The evidence seems to point to Finn as the werewolf. But that's a big fake-out, as it turns out that Cecily was the lycanthrope all along, and she planted the seeds of paranoia to make it easier to hunt everyone down. Maybe she wasn't a fan of their current cell phone plans? Weintraub earned some rave reviews for the movie. David Ehrlich of IndieWire, for one, declared, Milana Weintraub is radiating movie star potential in a winsome performance that shades her natural comic sass with all sorts of self-aware texture. Or you could be me. In a 2022 essay for The Daily Beast, Milana Weintraub wrote about some health problems that she suffered back in 2020 that seriously impacted her quality of life. As it turned out, she hurt one of her ankles so badly that she couldn't move her foot. The injury sent painful jolts through her body, a sensation she compared to the complicated and difficult labor she experienced when giving birth to her first child. That comparison may have come as a surprise to many of her fans, as she had kept her motherhood journey under wraps before then. But as it turned out, Weintraub and her husband had welcomed a baby boy back in May 2021. He arrived perfectly healthy, but the labor experience wasn't so simple, as the baby's head was pushing against his mom's spine during the delivery which resulted in tremendous pain for her. While Weintraub did reveal some of her motherhood story, she's also kept the rest of it private, as she hasn't disclosed her son's name. In addition to her showbiz career, Weintraub has made time for advocacy. This includes being outspoken about abortion rights, as she had an abortion herself when she was 25. In her 2022 essay for The Daily Beast, she revealed that at the time she was still taking random jobs to get by, and thus was not in a good financial space to raise a child. So when she accidentally forgot to take her birth control and got pregnant, she immediately had an abortion at her doctor's office. When Weintraub eventually did have a baby, she was able to bear a difficult labor because she chose to go through it. She emphasized that both her experiences with abortion and birth have impressed upon her the right for all Americans to have the freedom and power to make their own choices about their bodies, lives, and futures. Milana Weintraub was born in 1987 in Uzbekistan when it was a part of the Soviet Union, but she spent most of her life in the United States. Her father, meanwhile, spent much of his time working at his business in Russia. During an appearance on the podcast Meditative Story, Feintraub shared what it was like to grow up with a dad who was around only intermittently. While he split his time evenly during her elementary school years, his time away from her increased as she got older. This resulted in him missing a lot of important events in her life, including her bat mitzvah. Feintraub's father continues to spend much of his time away from his daughter, though they do manage to stay in touch over the phone and via occasional in-person visits. He also flew to the U.S. after the birth of her son, although COVID-19 pandemic protocols required him to quarantine for five days before he could play with his grandson. While Weintraub feels that she now has a pretty good relationship with her dad, she wants to have a different relationship with her own son that isn't similarly long distance. 